Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at more interesting items that once could have made it into RuneScape but failed their polls and were replaced with other items or other ideas or maybe even just scrapped altogether. Crazily enough, all of these items or ideas were actually pretty much fully developed and ready but fell through at the last moment thanks to the voice of the community. First up, we have Wildy Tag. Now, this is a mini game that was being planned and developed way back in 2006. Some of the documents back then were actually um, found, and Jagex decided that they wanted to try and revise this old mini game idea in an attempt to push out something new. The original idea was that posts would have been added in different locations around the wilderness, and these posts could be tagged by players. Players would enter the wilderness and begin running around trying to tag as many posts as possible without being killed, and in return they were rewarded in the form of combat experience. The more posts you tagged, the more dangerous the locations became, and the more experience you'd be rewarded in return. Originally, the documents apparently had a map of the wilderness and where the posts would have been located, each of which ranked from a level 1 to 3 depending on its risk level. Now as cool as posts and levels were, there was actually a second iteration and the idea of this was to create a reward system that would actually ramp up on the risks that you take and would have been done by actually implementing a token system. The idea is if you tagged one post, you would get one token. You could then escape the wilderness and redeem this token for a prize. Pretty straightforward. Or you could risk it all and try to tag another post, meaning you'd have two tokens. The more tokens you obtained, the higher the reward would be. The biggest thing, and the most intense, is that tokens would actually be dropped upon death, meaning that PKers could hunt other players and try to collect tokens that way. Like we just mentioned, the first iteration was the combat XP. However, the token system was simply more interesting and because of this, they begun developing it. Tokens would be redeemed for coins or other materials. This would make PKers have something to really look forward to and would increase the excitement altogether. As Jagex put it themselves, imagine having to decide whether to hand in your tokens for 500,000 or would you risk it all while it's going for one more post to double it and get 1 million. Then they thought about how they could give some variety to the players while they played the game. They thought about having the posts actually move around, just ever so slightly within a reasonable area, but just enough to make it so making an efficient system would be very hard and the intensity and risk would remain high, and it would also prevent PKers from camping specific posts continuously, which is quite an important thing to avoid. The goal was to offer something quick to learn, but required a lot of skill and strategy to master. You'd need to outsmart the PKers and tag your way to victory through the intensity of the game. I personally think that it kind of sounds fun and exciting in my own opinion, and I just want to know what you guys think about it. Should Jagex add this to old school RuneScape in some sort of way? Should they continue developing it? Let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to read. Moving on from that, we have our next idea that didn't quite make it, and that was the minigame reward shop. This was actually a very good idea in practice and passed the pull test. The only reason we don't see it in the game today is because the actual rewards within the shop failed. Let's go over this just a little. So the point was to give incentive to the players who wanted to play minigames. I was actually one of these players who loved playing minigames and the purpose was to offer us various rewards which would allow us to combine playtime spent in all the minigames together and in turn redeem them for rewards that were priced by minigame plays. So for example, let's take the item Bone Crusher. It would be locked behind the price of 300 pieces of 8, 50 agility arena tickets, 30 marks of grace, 50 castle war tickets, and 1000 pest control points. Once I got all those, I would be able to go ahead and get the Bone Crusher. The idea itself is actually great and would really breathe life back into minigames, which is an exciting thing to be honest. The problem was that the items in general that they wanted to offer really fell through. Ironically, however, almost all the rewards that did fail the polls did make it um, into the game somehow in different ways or different areas. But even with that said, let's go over them quickly so you guys have an idea of what they wanted to offer. First up, there was the Bone Crusher, which was actually later added as a reward for the Mauritania Diary. There was also the Rune Pouch, which was later added to the Bounty Hunter Reward Shop. Apparently, there was also a book which teaches you the Rigor and Augury prayers but it was later added to the drop tables of raids. And finally, clue scrolls, which would be rewarded at all three levels. 
and we know how we can get those. Kind of goes to show how in the really early days of OSRS, people were super afraid of approving new updates and the community at the time really was super hesitant on voting for power creep especially. Things have changed a lot since then and I'm glad they all made it into the game eventually, although to be fair I guess you could argue that the current setup for the rewards of those items makes a lot more sense than kind of being forced to play mini games in terms to get the rewards. I'd love to see Jagex take a second shot at this concept altogether though, with maybe some different rewards. Honestly it's just a super cool idea and it's an easy way to bring hype back into the old content of the game, and can make a lot of really fun areas in the past become popular once again. Alrighty, so next we're going to be taking a look at some old documents. So this is more so archived content and some of them did go, did actually get into the game. So some of the old information presented content like Varrock Diary, God Wars Dungeon, ZMI Altar, and Land of Goblins plus the Path of the Golifier quest. All of these actually were tweaked, pulled, and added into the game of RuneScape somehow. However, if you are paying attention, there's two quests that you might have never heard of because they didn't quite make the cut. This was the Land of Goblins and the Path of Gluefire. These quests were actually sequels to another slice of HAM, Ham, in the eyes of the Gluefire. These were confirmed in an existing archive, but until today, haven't actually been released. Now both of these quests actually do exist in RuneScape 3. Mod Ash mentioned these on Twitter and players did reply wanting the two to be mixed together in an attempt to end both cliffhangers, but apparently it would be against the lore that was revealed through RS3 in the Chosen Commander. Regardless, it's definitely something interesting to look at and I wonder if they'll ever make it into the game, maybe in a tweaked or different way, but only time will tell at this point. Next up we have the Storm Atronach boss, and this was a part of one of the winning player designs back in October of 2013. There's a lot to read about it, so I'll leave a link in the description down below, but for now let's try to summarize it the best I can. Essentially the boss would be an enlarged version of Slagolith, and it would attack with a magic attack capable of hitting 42, and would use the animations of one of the blitz spells from the ancient magic. It also have a secondary attack, which would have been more than likely a ranged attack hitting maybe 35 or so. More interesting, at about 66% health, it would spawn uh, defenders, four of them, using the model of the golem from the quest in the desert. The four golems attack with one ranging, one using melee, one maging, and finally one healing the boss himself. The biggest twist is that you can only damage these little defenders by using a pickaxe. We actually have some rewards listed here, now I'm not too sure what to make out of them myself, but I'll read them out to you guys and you decide. There would be the Sea Dragon Pickaxe, this would be a recolored pickaxe with enhanced mining capabilities, and it would be a very rare drop. There is also the Ranging Necklace, which would be a ever so slightly better than the Fury to retain its value, but it would be a rare drop in general. There was the four untradeable herbs which would drop uncommonly. There was also ruins including the soul ruin, the nature ruin, the death ruin, and blood ruins all in very nice quantities and they would also be common. Jagex stated themselves that they would have added more rewards as they see fit. The reasoning for this boss was also listed and it's pretty cool actually. It was to be a good step up in terms of giving solo players an option to face bosses. Some people simply don't want to group for bossing and the design wanted something more manageable for those solo players. A lot of players actually love the base idea of the boss itself, it's cool sounding and it's concept, but it more so got pulled out because many players didn't like the reward list it had. The name itself is also from Bethesda's Elder Scrolls and I'm not sure if that had any influence though since it was all poll based. Now based off of the same idea and design contest, we also had another idea that was pulled which was called Soul Snatcher, another very long read so make sure to check the links below, but let's try to summarize. It was a PvP plus PvM minigame in which two teams would have to face off against five monsters and collect their souls. 
Chambers would be present, and the teams would enter to fight small minions and then a boss type of monster. When the boss is slayed, each member would gain some souls, and the amount of souls gained would actually depend on how hard the boss monster was. There would have been easy, medium, and hard boss variants. The reward souls would then in turn be used to purchase weapons while in the minigame or be deposited to increase your team's score. The team with the highest score would of course win and the game could last a maximum of 20 minutes. The soul scoreboard would reward you with 25 souls for the easy boss kill, 50 for the medium boss, and 100 for the hard boss. There is also a 50 soul reward for each player that you slayed. Easy bosses would be things like green dragons, greater demons, etc. Medium bosses would be bronze dragons, calphite, guardian, etc. And finally the hard boss would be the iron dragon, steel dragon, etc. The player would start with no armor, no weapons, no items, nothing. You'd actually have to use the shop that was placed within the team's base, and each player started with 50 souls so they could get some starting gear that way. Your level would be disregarded and you could use any of the shop equipment in order to progress throughout the minigame. Now the shop list is actually present but very, very, very long. It take way too long for me to read out and kind of has everything but I'll post up some imagery on the screen for you guys to look at while I talk. The shop categories are the armor shop, the armor shop for ranged, armor shop for magic, weapon shop, weapon shop for ranged, weapon shop for magic, and then the item shop with potions, arrows, runes, and food. The reasoning for the minigame is again listed here, stating that it'd be completely unique and fun from what's ever been added into RuneScape. Combining PvP and PvM is something that people could really enjoy and promotes teamwork. Actually, a lot of players absolutely loved this idea and it was praised super heavily. The hype was real and the only single complaint was the lack of a reward system. And uh, honestly, what do you guys think about this? I know I asked throughout the video a lot, but I do want to hear your opinion and make conversation in the comments down below. It's always super exciting and interesting to read what you guys have to say. And I guess if I need to give my own opinion, I'm a little bit sad about the Souls game. I mean, it sounds super hype, super fun, and I really mean it when I say I think I'd be hooked on it, using all the items in the game, mixing and matching builds just for fun. I don't know, it's, it sounds fun, kind of sad that it was dropped just because of rewards. But anyways, that's just my opinion, and it also just about sums up the video for today. If you liked it, then leave a like and subscribe for some future content. As always, thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.